Hi, my name is Akiva Goldman. I'm the director and founder of Goldman and Associates. Our firm has a primary function on uh, family law matters, which include divorce, they include contracts, anything that involves a family. So please subscribe to our channel. Today we're going to talk about what a person should know concerning uh, concerning breach of contract. A lot of times in our society, whether it be in writing or not, there are contractual relationships. Almost everything that we do is a function of a contract. Any give and take situation is really something that goes to the underpinnings of the very nature of contractual relations. Um, and it could be something simple like a contract with your landlord. It could be something uh, more sophisticated like a franchise contract or something more complicated. What you need to know is that there are terms in the contract, some of which are substantial and some of which are not necessarily substantial. Um, it may not, for example, make a difference uh, whether or not your name is correctly spelled uh, with an E at the end or not with an E at the end or whether they say you're, you know, a, a, a certain uh, a middle initial is there. You know, these kind of things could be, but for the most part, are normally not consequential. Um, things that are consequential are the specific terms of the contract. Um, I'm not suggesting that the makers of the contract aren't, uh, uh, you know, significant. Uh, what I'm suggesting is when you look at a contract, you've got to figure out what's important, what's not, and if we breach that contract, will it be a material breach of the contract? Because if it's inconsequential, the court won't, probably will not look at that as a reason to relieve you of the requirements of the contract. So, for example, if you have a contractual relationship that requires you to pay rent, let's say, you're living in the apartment, then you find that when they drafted the contract, they neglected to put your middle initial in the contract. That is not likely to relieve you uh, from the burden of paying your rent. In other words, the court might say, yes, it's a mistake because technically you use a middle initial, it's not your initial, but the court's going to look at that as something that's inconsequential. Um, more specifically, the court might, for example, look at, let's say you say um, the doorknobs are loose and the landlord has an obligation to keep the front doorknob and all the front part of the house, the obligation to keep that in good working order. Does that relieve you of your responsibility to pay your debt? Probably not. Why? Because it doesn't make the place substantially uninhabitable. What's the goal of the contract? The goal is that they should provide you a place to live and you should pay rent. Those are the two main things. If they provide you a place to live but there's some small complication, it may justify contacting your landlord. It may even justify in some weird, uh, you know, circumstances to withholding a little bit. But it's not going to, there's no free lunch. And it's not going to absolve you of your obligation to meet your contractual relationship uh, requirements. Which means, when you look at contracts, and you look at determining, did I do something right? Did they do something wrong? How do, what's the give and take of the contract? You always got to look at it from the point of what's reasonable. Because the guy in the black robe is going to ask, did this person act reasonably in refusing to honor their part of the deal? And if the answer is yes, you'll be absolved. And if the answer is no, you're going to end up paying. If you have any questions about that, reach out. We'll be glad to help you out.